You're listening to the Higher Ideas Podcast, where ideas grow. Connect on Twitter, YouTube, iTunes, or higherideas.net. Now here's your host, I. Hello, fellow human, and welcome back to the Higher Ideas Podcast. My name is I, and I have been gone a long time once again. I think it's been about a year since I've been in front of this microphone, which is looking very awkward to me right now. But uh, let's see if I can still get into the swing of things. So, naturally I've been gone for a very long time, about a year, and I've been working on the book, still working on the book, which has taken a lot of energy and totally diverted me from this podcast. Sorry, everyone. And uh, just a whole lot of other things. Life has been happening very fast. Transformations have been going on. And there's just so much to update people on right now that it's difficult. It's difficult to come back and know where to start. In fact, more than anything, that's been what stopped me from coming back earlier to the podcast. Where the hell do I start? But that's a story for another episode. The fact is, there was another reason I wasn't coming back to the podcast, and that's because I had no idea who was listening to it. I've had very few messages from people that are listening, uh, very little feedback. A lot of it has been positive, but there hasn't been much, and I don't get a sense of who I'm speaking to. And that made it difficult in the last bunch of episodes. I was having a sort of a crisis. Who am I talking to? Is it working? Is it? Is anyone out there? Hello? You know? And so that's been another factor in why I just kind of put it on the back burner for a while. I was always going to come back, and here I am, back. But it was definitely something that was missing. And after a year of no activity on the podcast, I was sure that no one was listening anymore. And then last night, I got an email, out of the blue, entitled, Your Fellow Human, from a listener. Wow, a listener. (laughs) And I thought, instead of writing him a reply to a very important sort of question he's been asking me, I thought it would be a good idea to come back to the podcast in the form of answering the letter, so everyone can share. So... Let's begin by reading. The email says, Hey, I just wanted to send you a conscious message. I like what you're doing, man. Thanks. I listened to your podcast and just wanted to let you know that I am listening. Thanks again. Your work and dedication is being acknowledged and sanctioned. My name is, name withheld, 19 years of age, Mexican and residing in Hollywood, Florida. I would like to let you know I am also an artist. I love to sketch, draw, transform all the mumbo-jumbo inside of me into a more visual being. That's awesome. I write this message to you because I find myself stuck in a box. A box I cannot climb out of, titled Emotional Unbalance and Uncertainty. I wake up every day glad to see the sun is shining the beautiful blue sky with painted clouds, the soaring birds and graceful trees. But the sight of this puts me down, real down. I think I'm depressed. Trying to connect all the pieces, trying to develop a theory of why for every little event that comes my way. Having to learn all the human history to understand why today has become the outcome it is. I am driving myself insane, man. I get so frustrated when I do not understand our leaders the religious systems, the government systems, social standards, emotions. Every day is a war inside my head. With so much going on in the world, I am so intimidated. I tell myself, why even try? I do not even make a difference. I have no direction for myself. I can't seem to place myself anywhere. Although I do believe that life is so mystical and beautiful, I take a look at my body, admire its abilities, and recognize the power of my mind. We were all created for something much greater than living for pleasure and slaving for the society we have constructed today. I feel as if I waste every single day of this gift called life. I do not know what to do with myself. I know I have potential, man, because I feel it in my soul. I need some advice to guide myself. I know I want to expand my artistic abilities, but how can I climb out of this box? 
Sincerely, The Lost Soul. Wow, what a great open-hearted, just pouring everything out email. I really appreciate uh, the honesty and the trust. I hope you don't mind I read this out loud. To randomly receive this after a year of not podcasting, that really that really hit the spot. So thanks, uh, Lost Soul. I'll call you Lost Soul. So what can I say? What can I say in regard to this um, reaching for advice? Well, first of all, I can tell you that throughout this entire email, I kept seeing signals telling me that you're a very hard-working soul. So first of all, take pride in that. Uh, the struggle that you're feeling that even leads to depression, the, the wanting to understand, the looking for purpose, um, these are all frustrating things to deal with, yes, but at the same time, you have to realize that these mean that you do have a potential in you. You are a soul trying to reach a goal, and that's something that, that is, is usually suppressed in people. Um, not a lot of people out there seem to be striving extra, extra hard to really find out what their purpose is. There's a lot of sort of uh, uh, complacency out there, uh, sorry to say. Everyone has potential, but a lot of people sort of give up on it. And not giving up on it is difficult, and that's what you're struggling with right now. So take heart. It's a good thing that you're struggling. Um, I know it sounds strange, but it's good. It's the work that you have to do to get to where you'll get and finally realize, ah, this is what I am, this is why I'm here, I finally figured it out. That doesn't come free, that comes with a lot of hard work, looking into yourself, living, uh, finding experiences, trying things out, seeing what works and being honest with yourself when things don't work until you find it. But you will find it because you've got that beacon inside you You've identified it, the potential inside you that you feel. Just keep following it, and you will find it. It will guide you. If you listen to your heart, it will guide you there. And I speak from experience because I've struggled with the same thing, and I feel that recently I finally arrived after 15 years of struggle or something. I don't even know how long it's been, but pretty much since I was a teenager, I think, it started really bothering me, too. Where am I going? What is my purpose? The machine? Ah, I don't want to be a part of it. All the stuff you said. And if I could get a little more spiritual on you here, the state that you're existing in, holding on to that willingness to help the world, that willingness and that fire to reach your inner potential that you feel, all of that, please realize also that you're basically existing in a state of prayer. Your entire being right now is a prayer to the world for this potential to be unleashed. So you will be doing work on the inside to reach this, but I have faith that the world is also going to help. Um, life will come and sculpt you from the outside as you try to sculpt yourself from the inside, if you expose yourself to it. And that's why you have to get out there and live, and, and, and not... not um, not be isolated in your struggle. Go out there and live and share what you're feeling with others. Make good friends. Have those experiences. And that will give the opportunity for the universe to basically help you from the outside. And, and, and coincidences might happen that lead you in the right direction. Connections might be made that are very important in your growth. Just get out there and expose yourself because you are right now a beacon just asking for the help. Uh, even if you say nothing... Just in your being, I feel like you're broadcasting something that will be received if there's anything out there um, looking to respond. So that's another thing. Realize that you're existing, you're walking in, st in a state of prayer, and I think prayers get answered eventually if they're really deep and genuine, and that sounds to me like it's coming from a deep, deep place. So have faith in that sense, if you want. So there's something else I also want to address, and that is the part where, Lost Soul, you said, why even try? I do not make a difference. Well, I hope this, uh, this podcast itself is proving to you that you do make a difference. Because here you are sending an email, and the very next day, here's a podcast appeared on the internet from someone who hadn't spoken in a year. 
So you do make a difference. Everyone makes a difference. And focusing on the large problems of the world, as you clearly are doing, and as I do myself, um, it can get overwhelming. I'm so small and the problem is so big. How can I make it better? Well, this is kind of where ego comes into the picture, where you think you will be the one to make it better by yourself. Uh, that makes no sense, right? You can't yourself, as a tiny being, change the entire problem without some kind of miracle or very, very much luck. So yeah, it is disheartening when you look at it that way. But what you have to see is that if you don't help, it definitely won't get better even by an inch. So you can't let the size of it dishearten you. You just have to focus on what can I do to help and how can I make the world better for my little inch of the world. We all have a, an inch. And what becomes even more potent after that is how, once I've figured out how I can help, how can I motivate others around me to also use their inch to a better effect? So that is probably the shape of your life quest that I've just described. Uh, th that should be something that you look for, but that's way ahead. But definitely don't feel that you can't make a difference. You do make a difference. Everyone makes a difference. The problem is too many people don't try to make a difference, and so no difference happens. So definitely don't be defeated by the size of the problem. Every problem can be resolved, but you just have to work together. Everyone has to do something, and then things happen. And now I'd like to address this box that you can't climb out of, this, this feeling you have that you're boxed in and you're stuck. That's a little tricky. Um, as I've been climbing out of box after box after box and growing as a result myself, and as I've been trying to get you guys to do, I've been realizing that sometimes you just have to be in a box for a while. There are certain boxes that you cannot outgrow until certain experiences have happened or certain milestones have been reached. And until then, you're basically butting your head against a brick wall trying to get over it. Because the fact is, you haven't gotten big enough to get over it. You haven't grown enough in this new box to step over the wall, if you can think of that analogy. But, of course, as I said, you're a soul that wants to grow. So am I. And, and I've described myself in the past to people as a rocket against a brick wall. I'm just a rocket slamming against a brick wall, always trying to break through walls. But sometimes I burn myself out that way. And I've been learning more and more to sometimes sit back and think, okay, I have to be here for a while. I have to be in this box until I fill it. And then I can get to the next box. And it sounds to me like you're having a similar struggle. So my advice would be, relax. Where you are right now, it's okay. You know, I, I remember people telling me the same thing when I was 19, but here comes the big quote, you're only 19. That's pretty young. I know it doesn't feel young, and I know it doesn't mean that you're uh, sort of uh, a child. It's not what I'm saying. But there's so much life ahead of you, and you're entering the 20s. And I feel like the 20s are a section of your life where you can experience so instead of trying to focus on your long goal of helping to change the world and everything, I would say spend your 20s, or at least until 25, give yourself that as sort of a vacation to just expand yourself. Grow. Grow your talents. You're, if you're artistic, work on your craft. But also live. Live life. Have experiences. Travel. Uh, do things. Try things. Try and find out who you are, and at the same time you'll find yourself growing until you fill this box you're in, and then you'll be able to step over it. That's really the only advice I can give you. Um, you know, another way to think about it is a seed. A seed has a potential inside it, which is the plant, the tiny little speck of a plant. And the seed's wall is hard. It's, it's, it's thick. It's impassable. It's, it's a barrier, in fact, to protect what's inside. But the seed inside probably feels the same way. It probably feels trapped. It probably feels, ah, I'm full of potential. I am something. I don't know what I am, but I must erupt, right? And so it might be pressing against the walls of the seed. But until it's gotten strong enough, until it's done the inner work of forming its, its, its cellular structure and all the conditions are right outside and inside, 
it's not going to get out of that shell. But then eventually the shell breaks and the seed grows. So realize that you're a seed and focus on preparing yourself to grow. And the blooming will happen on its own. It's a natural process. Oh, so that's a lot of stuff that I just spat out at you. But, but all in all, the most important thing is don't let the size of your future task let you down. Don't let your will, your overwhelming will to grow burn you out. Just be, just relax. Remember all these things about yourself, but don't overburden yourself. Just make sure you're moving every day. Make sure you're growing a little bit, or you're experiencing a little bit, or you're living a little bit every day. And that should help against the depression, and help against all the disabling feelings you have. And just keep an eye. Keep an eye on the box that you want to get over. Keep an eye on things. But don't attack them so hard. And you'll find that you just easily slip over them at some point. So, I hope that helped. I really hope that did something. And I hope I hear from you, uh, Lost Soul. I hope you let me know if it helped and if you have any follow-ups. And I hope that at the same time I've helped somebody else out there who might have been feeling the same way as Lost Soul. And I'm sure they're grateful for you, Lost Soul, for writing this email, creating this reply podcast as a result. So never forget, taking action is what changes the world. Even a little action changes it a little bit. Speaking of taking action, I think next week is the week where I finally come back to the podcast. I think what I'm going to do is make a podcast every day next week. I think I'm going to give you guys a solid week to try and catch up to what has been happening here. Uh, wow. Just such a... So much to say. I don't even know where to start. But I'll try next week. How about that? So, until next time, fellow human and lost soul, keep thinking. <laughs>